Tom, how are you? Okay, we are we are good. Great. Welcome, everybody. Um, due to uh, the governor's uh, order, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Um, welcome, everyone, to our meeting. It's a beautiful day outside. I wish we could. Um, I look forward to us being able to do this in person. I don't know when, how far away we are from that, Pete. Uh, but we're at one point, we got to be getting close. Um, I'm tired of buying my own lunch on this Thursday. I'd like the town to at least buy me lunch uh, on this Thursday. Um, I need to call a order uh, of uh, acting members. Um, uh, Ms. Civitello, if you could just say you're here. Or wave. Deb? I'm here. Great. Tom I'm Carson? Here. Great. Patrick Penelo? Here. Tony Martino? Here. And Judy Keene? Here. Great. Great. Very good. Um, I think that's all the members that we have on this call, Pete. Do we have anything to vote on today? I don't see anything. No, there's nothing pressing. It's mostly all uh, updates or uh, you know, guidance for future direction. Yep. Very good. Great. So uh, well, again, welcome, everybody. Why don't we get right into the meeting? Uh, Pete, if you can go into the... Uh, your abbreviated version of development projects update. And if anybody has any questions, any properties that Pete doesn't share, uh, please feel to bring it up. Sure. Um, 1000 Silas Dean Highway, the Weight Watchers building. At one point, there was an email that went around that thought that the property had sold for 1.95 million. Um, I did speak to uh, AJ, the property owner, and that's his um, listing price, not his uh, sales price. Uh, otherwise, there's nothing uh, actively being discussed uh, for that property. So it, it's um, quiet at this point in time. Um, 207 Church Street, which is the auction house gallery. There, there is a potential buyer uh, uh, negotiating uh, with the owner. And there's also a brewery that we've talked about in the past, uh, also interested in going in there. So there may be some uh, action to report uh, relatively soon. Uh, the nursing home, 341 Jordan Lane, uh, I think you you all know that there's an unusual ownership situation there. It's owned by a family, and they have leased it to the previous uh, operator. So the lease terms are, are, I think, four or five years away from expiring. So I did meet with those, um, that family ownership, just to kind of discuss the pros and cons of, of moving forward. There was a senior housing project developer that was looking at the property and doing an assessment of what uh, the possibilities were that has gone quiet. Um, but we are uh, trying to uh, see if we can work with the uh, actual ownership to, to maybe make something happen there. And then lastly, uh, 245 uh, Main Street, which is the corner of Church and Main. Uh, you may have heard there is a brewery that is um, looking to um, lease with a an option to buy the property uh there was a pnz meeting uh earlier this week at that meeting the planning and zoning commission did approve some new regulations that would allow a brewery uh, to go into that property as well as several other properties in town so those are the, kind of the big big highlights the big properties i'm happy to answer any specific questions on anything else if anyone has any Leslie? Peter, the um, the Rite Aid building, I know that was before P, they split that property up. Do we know anything about what the plan is or um, what the owner wants? I know the owner wants to sell it, but do we know anything about what, what his proposal might be? I have uh, talked to the prospective buyers, but since that deal is not um, you know definitive yet, I, I'll, I'll hold off on any details, but uh, it would be uh, a repurposing of the existing building. Um, they wouldn't be talking about tearing it down, but uh, the building could also be added to uh, if, if the space needs existed, given the, the way the property is now split. Uh, Tom was mentioning that property was also on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, it's one big property, so the strip center at the corner and the vacant Rite Aid building are on one property. So they uh, officially received approval to split the two buildings which would open the door for him to potentially sell uh, the Rite Aid property separate from uh, the Strip Center. There's a bunch of cross parking 
uh, and driveway easements that all have to be executed in order to make that happen, but it was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, any other questions, Leslie? I just wanted to know what was going on with the ABC Burger Company. Did, are they moving ABC forward Burger, on there, that? There we said. Uh, he is uh, considering moving forward on that. He may, uh, because of what's going on in the restaurant business, he may scale the building back, uh, making it smaller. It was a very large um, building for uh, a restaurant like that. I think it was 6,000 square feet, which is a significant um, square footage. So I, did, I have talked to Joe and he is presently considering what his options are. If he does uh, downscale it, he would have to, go, have to go back through uh, the process again. And he's a little uh, hesitant to go back through uh, because the, the property is in the historic district. Um, so um, yeah, there's uh, more, to, more to say on that in, in the next few months potentially. So Pete, he has hesitancy. What can we do to help shepherd that? Or should we meet with him and discuss what some of his concerns might be? Um, if there's a way that we can act as a little bit of a lubricant to help um, that move forward, what can we do to, to be proactive with them or do we need to do something to be more proactive? I can certainly uh, put that offer out to see if he'd like to sit down and you know uh, discuss his concerns uh, about going forward. Um, so I can certainly make that offer, which might get you know the conversation uh, moving uh, in a in a in a more positive direction. So I will certainly do that. And uh, if he wants to meet uh, separately from the commission, or if he wants to show up on a future uh, agenda, I will give him, you know, both of those options. I think if we could have somebody from PNZ and historic at that meeting and just kind of talk about and just get a general sense on, so he does, I mean, he's been through everything. My guess is he's going to keep all the same materials used on the exterior that have been approved. He's just going to do a smaller footprint. You know, what can we do to expedite without taking any important pieces out to help him move forward uh, on that. So um, yeah, I think, if we could... yeah, I think on that one, he's probably more concerned about the, the neighbors, you know, having another bite of the apple. If he, it, it could be appealable. Right now he's passed any appeals from the neighbors. If they were to provide a legal challenge that would open that up again. So he may have, you know, those kinds of concerns, but certainly um, yeah, whatever, you know, whatever guidance and feedback he needs, we can certainly make make arrangements to do that. What is the precedent on that, Pete? If he's already been through the process and the appeals process and the neighbors, and they, you know, they had some very passionate positions at the time, but it did move forward. What would, does, if he goes through it again, even if it's the same business, except a smaller footprint, is there still an appeals process? Do, do they have that option to come back and appeal again? Is that how it works? Yes, legally, any action, whether it's just an amendment of a previous action is an appealable action. So, but I would think that their arguments would be lessened because it's a lesser project, lesser traffic, lesser, lesser you know, right. occupancy, smaller building. So I, I don't know that the appeal concerns, um, you know, would, would be that substantial, but then again, you can, you can get, go to court, um, on anything and it can help hold it up in, you know, for, for years. So. Okay. Any Peter, George, George Oikel here. Uh, would, would you mind discussing what the commission uh, is going to do at their next meeting, the fence issues, and also describe uh, the NIDAT split site uh, that we discussed, that we dealt with the other night and what it means. Thank you. So George, maybe when uh, your your agenda item comes up, we can we can jump into those things. Oh, okay, sure. Yep. I was going to do that. I thought maybe you'd. Want to go. Okay. No, no. Okay. We appreciate your aggress aggressiveness, though, George. We appreciate that. <laughs> well, um, glad to do it. Questions on on building property updates. Okay, Pete. If we can go on to uh, the business outreach survey. So we are starting to get some of those um, back now. There right. was a a glitch with the US Postal Service on the prepaid uh, envelopes. Um, we had to run around trying to replicate our postcode. Nobody in town hall seemed to know 
where that was, but we've gotten past that now. So, um, but yeah, Denise, I think we've got about a dozen uh, responses. Um, we haven't started to uh, spend any time analyzing those, but probably at our next meeting, we might be able to share some preliminary uh, statistics uh, and start getting into the, getting into whether we are at a point of, you know, either following up or responding or, or that kind of thing, so. Great. Uh, Dawn, this is for you. I know you're on mute, but Councilor, I mean, um, um, uh, Member uh, Thompson is here on the call as well. He wasn't here for the roll call. Um, Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Um, so that's good news, Pete. How many, uh, how many did we mail? Uh, do you know? Oh, boy. I don't think I saw the final count from, uh, and I haven't seen the invoice yet. So um, we were adjusting the uh, mailing addresses at the very last minute, trying to add in some of the new businesses. So um, I think it well, it ended up being a little bit over a thousand, but don't don't quote me on that. I'll, we can get you those numbers. Uh, okay. Once, once I see the invoice, I've got a copy of the letter, which is great. But I've, it's been a while since I think the other members have seen that. Would you mind sending a copy of the letter out uh, to everybody uh, on the call and who's not on the call, just so they can see what's going out to the business yep. owners? Um, I, I have a question on the survey. Is there an end date to when we want those responses in by? I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to remember the last, we made a few edits at the very last. You, Mark, did you say you had it handy there? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Um, I don't see anything. I don't think we did put a, um, uh, a due date okay. on this. Unless, I, and I'm pretty sure I've got the most recent one. I think we left it open. Um, and as they come in, they come in. Uh, yep. But I don't think we put one in. Okay. So, Not based on the one that I'm looking at now. So I'll just keep sending it out then. Um, yeah. I'll post it. So I'll keep we do it. have the Chamber of Commerce would like to invite you to join them. Join the Chamber is a great way to stay informed and network with other business owners for more info. And uh, we've got your weather sold at SPC Global piece in there. So we're promoting you. If you promote us, that's just a win-win. Yep. Um, Okay, great. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Any questions on the business outreach survey? Great. Tax incentive program policy update, Mr. Gillespie? I, I haven't had a chance to really sit down again and, and start editing that, but I think we left it uh, that the next steps would be to start revising the language in the policy and then uh, discuss uh, uh, how, to, how to approach the town council with those um, recommendations. So uh, I just have not had a chance to uh, finalize that yet, so. I think when we left that meeting, we, we had some good input from the group on making some adjustments to time and dollar amounts and whatnot, which I think was probably the piece that was the most yes. open to interpretation. And we did accomplish that as I remember. I think we're in a good uh, spot. It's just now taking it to the final uh, draft level and uh, circulating it with everybody and then obviously uh, most importantly, uh, discussing, you know, with the council, with the mayor, uh, as to uh, whether they think the final recommendations are, are the way to go. Okay, great. Any questions from the group on the incentive program? Great. Okay, Salastine Highway. Um, this is probably the, the, um, the one that's probably, I'd like to get the most discussion on uh, as we can. I don't think Nick is here. Cindy, I think you're you're here, but Nick is not here. Um, the In the last, uh, thank you to Don. in the last um, uh, meeting, um, item D on the um, minutes, um, I said that a meeting was held a week ago with great, with great participation, which we did have. Commission discussed dedicating staffing uh, with a 24 seven mindset. In, in other words, putting somebody on the, the town role with who's sincerely focused on that particular um, uh, mission on top of other things that we're working on at, at economic development and, and things that Peter is working on, et cetera. Um, the placeholder for $50,000 of that, um, that um, manager, Mr. Evans put in on our behalf. And, and we were in the process of looking at a job, uh, job description and noting responsibilities. I bring that up because I know that we have a passionate group of people that are interested in what we can begin to do. We know it's a multi-year or maybe even a decade long process. And Pete, I'd like to talk about what Tom brought up um, in how long it took 
um, and the steps that Rocky Hill took to get the process where they're at right now. If you can, I'll, I want you to, I want to call on you in a moment for that, just to give us a little bit of backstory. But um, we, we can be good at turning the rocks over as a group, um, but there's only so much we can do. Um, uh, I, we believe that um, without somebody who wakes up every morning, as we said, focused on what we can do to improve uh, the functionality and look uh, of the Salestine Highway, um, uh, it, it really is a waste of time. I think Councillor um, Forrest did a really good job when I asked him um, a, a few, a couple of months ago, I think now, why do you think we've been looking at all these plans for the South Dean Highway, but nothing has been moved forward. And he shared what I really wanted him to share. And that was along with, I think Council Martino added to it as well, that look, that we, we didn't have enough focus on the inside to push that forward. We were operating currently right now. I think, you know, Pete is wearing a Harper Whalers hat, but he also wears a lot of other hats as well. And I think we're just in a position that if we want to take a legitimate run um, um, on, uh, on improving the functionality and look at the Southstein Highway, we need somebody inside. Um, uh, and again, I'd, I'd like to get your position too, Gary, and what your, what your thoughts are on what that person or persons might look at look like we've talked about using potentially a consultant. Um, I personally think my gut is if we had an employee um, that we could put on, I think it would be um, um, one, I think it'd be, we would get more bang for the buck and two, they take direction from us every day. That's just my humble two cents, which is all it's worth at times. Um, so Pete, if you could um, discuss on the, um, just to give us some context on Rocky Hill and where they're at right now, because they are doing one of the things that we've talked about. Um, and if you could just fill in the blanks there for me, um, that would be great. So there's a couple of things going on um, in Rocky Hill that affect the Silestine Highway. Uh, they are, uh, the DOT has uh, announced plans to upgrade and uh, uh, synchronize a, a variety of traffic signals, not just on the Silestine Highway, but on some of the uh, approaching streets and other state roads. Uh, in Rocky Hill to improve traffic flow. Secondly, they are presently working on a streetscape project, sidewalks, lighting, uh, looks like some landscaping. Uh, that project um, I think was bid out a couple of years ago, but it looks like they're getting closer and closer to uh, finishing that. And then lastly, Rocky Hill um, is in some preliminary discussions with the Connecticut DOT about looking at a uh, portion of the Silestine Highway in Rocky Hill for what they refer to as a road diet. Uh, road diets typically consider eliminating traffic lanes, um, you know, maybe adding a bike lane. Uh, the details of all of that are still in the early conversation stages. So um, we discussed at a meeting or two ago that there is a potential pot of money available through the Capital Region Council of Governments and the Connecticut DOT that can be used for you know, transportation studies. So we did reach out to Rocky Hill. Uh, I think Gary might have, might have also had a conversation with the town manager. I talked to the town engineer and the planning staff and their economic development person. And they all seem interested in us jointly pursuing you know, a corridor long traffic study. Uh, they do understand that there is a matching uh, there's a cost match requirement, uh, but nevertheless, there there is there seems to be uh, some willingness uh, for both towns to work uh, together. That grant would be due uh, towards the end of the month. And uh, related to that, I did send an email to the Connecticut DOT, letting them know of our interest and seeing if they share our interest in looking at the entire corridor for traffic uh, calming and you know, those uh, kinds of uh, other improvements, intersection improvements, um, you know, traffic signalization, you know, all the things that would go into a corridor long study. So uh, that's the Reader's Digest version of that. Peter? Peter, it's, yes. it's Thompson. This hey. might be a, a, a related question to what you just went through. Uh, it appears that Rocky Hill has some sort of traffic study underway now. When I'm biking, you'll see a car with a license plate reader parked on the border, like you'll see it on the corner of Hangdog and Route 3, and you see it on 
I forgot the, the road Highland or, or the goes into Rocky Hill. Um, if they're doing that type of study and, and picking up license plate data, they're probably able to figure out where cars are coming from. That would be interesting data if they could share that, right? Because essentially those are cars coming out of Weathersfield. Um, either that, that or a, some that sort of town, government plot. That was the town of Rocky Hill vehicle you, you're indicating? It's a, yeah, it, well, it's just, it's, it's a dark sedan and it's got a license plate reader hanging off it okay. and it moves around town. Maybe it's something okay. from the X-Files, I don't know, but uh, I, you know, if they're doing that type of traffic study and, and you, know, you could kind of pile onto that and get that information, that would be at least a parcel, partial picture. That did, it look, did it look like a, a police department vehicle? Yeah. Okay, so we have one of those too, which drives around and, and catches license plates and you know, those kinds of things. But I can ask if it's something else other than, other than that. Because if that's part of that, that'd be great information to have. So, um, and this is stuff that the uh, council and the um, uh, in Rocky Hill started in where Pete was it 2018? It might have even been before that, uh, Mark. Um, I think 2018 is when you started to see some of the press releases and, and that kind of thing. In order to even get to that point, I'm sure there were a couple of years uh, in advance of that to to get some of those things um, at that level. So the wheels of progress turn slowly, uh, but they do turn. And I guess that's the point I wanted to make again to the group. And uh, you know, at one point, and I know we have members of the, of the council here and the mayor. Um, you know, we Gary, I think, was generous with us on putting a 50 gay uh, placeholder for that position. Um, personally, and again, because I'm kind of on the outside looking in. Um, to me, with the amount of staffing that I know Rocky Hill has over Weathersfield and Newington has over Weathersfield from the EDIC perspective. We're really down a full-time person, frankly, in my opinion. Um, and I haven't talked to anybody on the call regarding this. This is just my opinion on this. But we have stuff that we're trying to get done uh, in town that I think are very important. We spent a lot of money on studies um, on the South Dean Highway. I think we've had two over the last 15 years. And we paid a lot of money for those studies. But I think we're in a position now that if this is something that we're trying to make our town as competitive as possible, I think the, the guys, those of you on the, I think Tom, Car I forget who said it, but they call it the thoroughfare of town or, the, or Weathersfield's Main Street, if you will, uh, that there are things that we can do. I think 50K is a great start. I'm not sure if that really accomplishes what we really need if we really want to dig in. And I know this is a time where you're trying to get blood out of a stone from an economic perspective, but I just wanted to be on record that if we are serious about this, we really need to have somebody seriously involved with it. Um, and, and, and not, not shortcut it um, and not try to do it, um, you know, haphazardly. Um, um, again, I, I just wanted to be on record with that because it is an important issue. Um, I think it is time that we try to do something uh, in those areas. And as I said, guys, even if we had the finances and we had um, uh, the, the will, we could be a few years away from getting the first stuff started. So we really do need to get going. And we're hoping that you know, what, what we started with, with Peter, I mean, excuse me, with Gary um, um, and our, our manager and a 50K placeholder, again, I think is a good start. I do think it's not woefully low, but I think it's low. But I also know that uh, beggars can't be choosers, uh, but we need to be focused on this. And I believe that this person who would be involved in grant writing um, in turning rocks over and finding funding, I think if they find one big item out there and they're able to bring money into the town, they more than pay for themselves um, uh, pretty quickly if we find somebody who's talented um, um, and diversified and multifaceted enough uh, for this particular position. Um, anybody else have anything to share with regards to the Southstein Highway? And Gary, please feel free if you'd like to, um, to pop in or save your comments for when we call on you shortly, whatever works for you. Judy, you're on mute. Um, I think that we should probably look to involve our state and federal legislators as well, because now if this uh, big uh, infrastructure plan goes through, there may be some uh, money for smaller communities that, uh, and by the way, this is a big road, you know, it's a state highway and it goes right through Weathersfield. So I think that we should reach out to our state and local um state and federal legislators to see what they have in mind. 
Thank you, Judy. Mr. Lesser. Uh, thank, thank you, Mark. And it's great to see everybody. And I have to drop to pick up my daughter at the high school in a few minutes, but it's wonderful to see everybody. Just a few quick comments. One, I think it's wonderful that you guys are planning on hiring someone dedicated and focused on the Silas team. I would advocate that maybe it be a full-time position. And I know with federal monies and the American Rescue Plan that we're going to get some odd $7 million from the uh, feds at some point, and I agree with you, Mark, 50000 is a great start, but would advocate for a full time. And there's monies that are going to be coming to our town that are available. Uh, second comment I'd like to make is few of us chatted, Deb Raymond, Cindy Jacobs about, and some others have talked about uh, the need or the opportunity, I should say, to start a Silas Dean Merchants Association and get input regularly from a group on a monthly basis. Many towns have this type of merchants association associated with a main business or main thoroughfare. And I know Gabe D'Amico, who many of you know, who tends these meetings quite often, um, is, uh, has provided a lot of input as a property owner. And I think we should expand you know, out from Gabe uh, and continue to get his input, but others there. So those are my, my two comments. Strong support of the person would even advocate a full-time position because there's going to be additional monies coming in. And uh, I think it would be great if we had some formal way to solicit regular input from uh, Silestine property owners and merchants. So appreciate a few minutes, Mark. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kenny. Um, any other comments um, regarding Silestine Highway? Uh <clears throat> In response, Kenny, to your comments on the uh, Merchants Association, this was brought up at uh, one of the Silas Dean revitalization meetings, and the town really can't solicit people to form an association, but at one of those meetings, Gabe did say he was going to talk to other merchants about you know setting that up. So you might want to check with him, see if you're friendly with him, see where he stands on that. Because the town can't solicit that. You know, the merchants have to on their own to come forward with the request. Thanks, Tony. Uh, and, to, and to dovetail on what Kenny was saying, I, I think we even talked about maybe having this individual, um, the potential employee, um, that we set maybe even a limited um, period of time that it become a three-year position or something um, and not make it because I know budgetarily we have to be fiscally smart about what we're doing. So I do think that there's, there's things that we can do to maybe um, minimize the potential uh, financial input to the town. We can take a look at that as well. Uh, but I do think we need to do something um, and, and, and start somewhere. Um, any other questions regarding Southstein Highway? Cindy, you have a comment? Just a comment, and that's just, um, I, I want to um, just um, support also the great comments you had, Mark and Kenny and, and Judy, and uh, that we need the resources. I think a three to, or five year position would be great, um, and uh, full time being better than half time, but if we can get a position, uh, what was clear from our kind of pull out meeting on the Silestine Highway that Mark put together is we didn't. We need the resources and to be able to make this uh, come to fruition. And we can't do it with the existing resources. And there's a lot of potential uh, state, uh, federal monies, um, and together with our um, representatives uh, and the um, appropriate amount of dedicated resources, I think we can find success and move forward. Thank you for the comments, Cindy. I think that to, 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 to um, again, dovetail off what you're saying, I think, I don't know if this has holds any water, but if we begin to ap apply both for state, federal money, um, the capital region um, uh, loan, if, if they know that the town of Wethersfield has a dedicated person that's focused specifically on this, I don't think it would hurt for them to know that we have somebody focused specifically on utilizing whatever funding that we get, that we're laser focused on that particular area. Um, any other comments? Mark. In that we have residents and businesses that are very interested in uh, going forward with improvements as well. I think that, you know, people knowing that that's happening is a big deal. Agreed. 
Any other comments? Okay, great. We'll move forward. Um, Pete, the CIP 21-22. So I may, I may defer to uh, Gary on this one because I think he just released uh, his budget uh, details, but um, there have been uh, some, some changes to the budget that we submitted. Uh, I will let Gary jump in here and um, provide you with the details. I've been out of the office for a few days, so I don't know if any of that changed. So I, I'll let uh, Gary give you the uh, most timely update. Give me one second. My computer rebooted earlier today and I forgot to bring that one back up. So hold on. Unless, uh, Gary, you want me to cover it if things haven't changed since our last conversation? Uh, I'm not sure if they have, but just in case. Um, so as part of, you know, I'll go into further detail of this when I do my presentation, but um, I, uh, I trimmed department requests down a million dollars um, prior so that I could make my budget, um, my budget recommendations to the council. As part of that, CIP took a slight hit. Um, in total, uh, we carved out about 140,000 out of the 900, or just shy of 900. Uh, that would impact my recommendation based off of talking to staff, um, about $25,000 reduction in some work that they were doing on the Copper Mill Road and uh, Gough Brook culvert, uh, which was plan design related. $25,000 reduction in the traffic sign inventory, which was to hire a consultant to do the traffic sign inventory. Um, a $10,000 reduction in the sidewalk ramp improvements to meet ADA requirements. Um, still leaving $55,000 in there, but that was basically project-based knowing how much we could get through in a year. Um, about $5,000 in some of the routine roof maintenance, about $5,000 from Charles Wright portable unit we're doing that in-house and I think we can do some cost savings there. Um, $5,000 from the community center parking lot repair, which uh, dropped us to about $20,000. $5,000 for replacing, doing improvements to the hallway, lobby, carpet and blinds in the community center. Um, I reduced the facade loan improvement program. To I, uh, The request for, for $50,000, I reduced that to zero. There is still some money in there. Um, and then reduce the, if you recall, the plan of conservation and development, the affordable housing plan, and I think some other related plans. We were trying to do a multi-year process to fund those. I reduced that by about $10,000. So that's about $140,000 recommendation uh, reduction to council. That's all I have for CIP. I can talk about the budget more when, when it's my turn. I muted myself, I'm sorry. Um, Pete, anything else to add to that? Nope, just um, so, so the, the 50, 50 for the facade program um, is not there and then 10 out of the uh, plan of development. So I just that that's that was the previous conversation I had with Gary. So okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager. Um, okay. Um, any other questions on the CIP side? Obviously, the the uh, the hit to the facade improvement uh, improvement program um, is really what affects us the most. Um, uh, and we you know we can chat more about that, but I understand where cuts need to be made, I get it. Um, but I think that's the part that probably affects EDIC the most, Peter, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Any other questions on that? Great, restaurant directory. What are we doing with that, Pete? So we did the, um, I did send out the, um, the flyer that we had prepared. Uh, we have distributed that. I think there's a little typo in there that we may have to, we may have to clean up, but um, uh, we've sent that out. We've um, promoted it several times. Some of the local, um, what's happening in Weathersfield, some of those Facebook pages have taken that on and also started to spread that. So we wanted to, uh, and the final version of that uh, includes a QR code, which takes you to our uh, inventory of local restaurants. So it was just a nice, 
plug to get out there in the community to remind people, uh, support your local restaurants. And also here, here is our list of local restaurants for you to uh, support and make sure you're aware of. I have not uh, pushed the broader project with the surrounding towns. Uh, it is quite, it will be quite an undertaking and I haven't gotten any volunteers from the other towns to take the project on. So uh, as these things are prone to do, it would probably end up falling on our uh, staff. Uh, so I just have not jumped into the broader uh, project yet. But all of the other towns that we mentioned are still very supportive of us all doing that. So um, we will keep you posted on that. I'm just hoping that one of them wants to take the lead or the health district wants to take the lead on that. So that'll give us one less thing to work on. Was, it, that, was the impetus from the health department on this originally? No, it came from the um, Heritage Tourism Commission. Oh, okay. And um, they have agreed uh, if necessary to help with some of the, if there are costs associated with it. Uh, the health district was, all, was very supportive uh, and it made sense for them to do it on a, on a regional basis, but um, they did not step into the fray either, so. Okay. Any questions on the directory from the group? Uh, Peter, uh, on the uh, sign uh, or the flyer, is it within the? Is it that the typo? Yeah, I think that was the yeah. typo that we need to Just we need to edit. Just that, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Just take that the out. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can I also sure. make a suggestion that um, that. Uh, list of restaurants and all of that go on a Facebook page for Weathersfield because there's people that don't really use QR codes, but if they see the uh, it on Facebook or I don't know, even put the QR code on Facebook so that more people are aware of it. And, you know, when I was looking through the list, there's restaurants that I've never even heard of. Right. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that was really kind of the point of doing this is to make yeah. sure everybody's aware of who's out there, where they are, here's their phone yeah. number, here's their Facebook. Uh, it's a long list, but I, I think we could probably create something um, Weathersfield uh, specific. Yeah. We just create yes. a link, Peter. And that's what the QR yeah. code basically is. So um, but rather uh, than that, if there's an actual link that they could click on versus yeah, the right. QR code. Instead of the yep. And you could include the QR code too, but right. those who don't use that um, technology, um, just clicking on a link would take you to all the restaurants in Weathersfield, you know? Yep. That's a I good think, idea. That's good. I yeah, posted just that on the... Um, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Good. Okay. Jump in. Jump in. I, I posted it on the um, chamber Facebook page and I did get comments on it and people who reached out to me and they've used it. So it is helpful. Right. Yep. It's the kind of thing we'll just keep um, plugging and putting out there on a regular basis just to keep reminding people that, you know, the restaurants uh, need their support. And then I think um, as we go forward, we may do it for other segments of the business community, you know, whether it's retail or service businesses, that kind of thing. So I think <coughs> this will continue in different shapes and forms as we go forward. But make it shareable on Facebook or Instagram or whatever so that everybody can share it with all their friends and neighbors too. Right. Judy, on, on our page, it's shareable on the um, other um, group posts, it's not shareable because they're private. Most residents wouldn't be going to your site. I know, but I'm just saying for everybody here, you know, go on that if you want to share it. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Um, budget, Peter? We kind of touched on that already, but. Yeah, I think uh, Gary may want to find, finish that up uh, just to tell you overall uh, where we are. I think he released the budget yesterday or within the last couple of days. I um, will roll right over to our illustrious town manager, Mr. Evans. I'll put you on, sir. I was going to start with the the budget's horrible, but I'm being recorded, so who knows how that will go. But um, yeah, it was a very difficult budget year um, because keep in mind we're coming off of a benchmark from last year where we so many unknowns with the COVID uh, issues that we were able to really you know, and I give a lot of 
all credit to the council on foresight, right? To understand that there's gonna be things that we probably weren't gonna be able to do in the next 12 months. And so our bar starts low, which means to return things to kind of a status quo with some tweaks, that number comes up a lot higher to get there. Um, so I'll kind of talk a little bit more about the budget um, in a moment when I get there, but since you mentioned the budget, I figured I'd throw it out there. So a couple things that are going on or some things of interest. Um, I like to start with COVID because right before this meeting, I have my weekly meeting with my emergency operation group and CCHD. Our numbers are trending upward again um, over the last, I don't know, at least month. Um, there was a period in end of February, beginning of March, we actually dipped under red into orange, which means we had fewer than 15 cases per 100,000 in town. That was a significant drop. <clears throat> I think the month before that, we were probably somewhere in the 60s. We dropped down to under 15, just slightly. Like in the last 30 days, we have been going upward. Um, two weeks ago, we were at 20 cases per, or sorry, three weeks ago, we were at 20 cases per <clears throat> 100,000. What I heard this morning was we were at 27 cases per 100,000. But by four o'clock, I'll have an updated number to see if that went up or down. But my guess is we've trended up, continue to trend up um, from this week to last week. We went up 80 people that tested positive. And if you keep in mind that fewer people are now testing because they're getting the vaccine and a lot of the restrictions and requirements to test have changed because the governor changed the travel policy. Um, one of the concerns that we're discussing is the fact that fewer people are testing, but our numbers are still going up. Now that can work one way or another, which means you can dilute the total universe by more people testing and fewer and having more negatives, or you could actually have a true trend going upward. It remains to be seen at this point. Um, and I'm not a statistician, so I won't weigh in, but I wanted to throw it out there. Uh, we still continue to follow the governor's guidelines at this point, which is being considered 2.1. Call it 2.1a because there's minor adjustments, but uh, staff are are um, intending to have programs for the most part running um, as much as possible until we hear that they have to sh um, reduce in any way. Uh, a couple things from Mike Emmett that he was mentioning: um, they're looking at using Cove Park for the graduation rather than doing what they did last year, but they would significantly reduce and. Um, uh, the number of attendance over and above. They're looking at somewhere around 270 people graduating. They're gonna do about 300 chairs at Cove and have to force and space everyone out accordingly if they actually go in that direction. But again, it's gonna be predicated upon governor's allowance of how many people can be outside. Um, there's a few other things that happen, dollars for scholars um, and uh, uh, prom. Um, all items that they're looking into figuring out how to make those things happen. But again, you have 270 people who can attend a prom, not including their dates. Uh, how do you space that out? So we're looking at doing that outside. And dollars for scholars are actually considering setting it up like we did graduation where it would be a drive up ceremony, kind of interesting. Um, but again, keeping an eye on those numbers, are, they're heading in the opposite direction of what we'd like to see despite the warmer weather and people getting vaccinated, um, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. The, as I mentioned previously, change in the weather, um, we're working on somewhere around $9 million worth of projects out there from the engineering and physical services uh, side of things. Um, as part of that, um, there's a number of kind of big ones coming up, projects just of interest that you wanna keep an eye out for in terms of public hearings and just information to the public. Uh, realigning and restriping Garden and Knott Street right around the park um, in Old Weathersfield. Maine and Hartford in Old Weathersfield, also Maine and State. Uh, we put, uh, for the state's request, we put some preliminary numbers and some pictures together for them and we're gonna go through a public vetting process to get the last uh, bit of public engagement that we can and input that we can before a finalized approved project to the state. That'll probably be coming in the next I would say in the next 30 days or so. Uh, also, Walcott Hill Road reconstruction project, including the extra half a million dollars for uh, improving the island uh, near Jordan Lane, um, is is uh, in design process. 
Um, Parks and Recreation has released the fields to the sports team. So we have a number of teams out there playing and practicing. So it's kind of good to see those fields being put to use uh, earlier in the season than they were at this time last year, everything was still shut down uh, for this type of usage. And we're, we're kind of, we're doing our best to get things back to normal or closer to back to normal just in time. Cause I'm not sure my wife was gonna be able to take the kids in the house much longer. Um, something that I wanna come back to uh, after I kind of finish my spiel and someone remind me to it, but planners um, getting a lot of requests from the Weathersfield Beautification Trust. They're having some issues with getting enough volunteers out um, because frankly, the volunteers have done a great job, but they're tired. And uh, we need to figure out how to diversify. They, if you're not familiar with the planners that I'm talking about, you can see them at many of the entranceways, gateways into town, as well as throughout Old well Weathersfield. There's you know, big uh, flower floral planners uh, kind of in strategic locations. Um, they had reached out to us looking for help. So if anyone has thoughts on how to groom and grow the volunteer base uh, to do that, I've already reached out to the high school to see if their horticulture program or any of their existing programming they'd like to consider extending into the summer. Um, but I'd love to figure out how to increase that engagement because I'd, let, I'd hate to see that program go away. They've done a great job. When you say groom and grow, was that pun intended, Mr. Manager? Uh, yes. Okay. In, I, thought it might be. Um, I have a question for you. Do you, uh, how would people reach out? Who would, um, uh, who's the contact there? Debating if I want it to come through here or if I want to get out of the way. Uh, let me get back to you on that. I would say at the very minimum, you can send me an email and I'll connect. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the individual's name right now. Peter, you got it? Uh, for which? Whether the town? Uh, it's D Doug Sachs's wife, right? Yeah, I can't think yeah. of her name. Su mm. Is it Margaret? Contact Margaret, Margaret Con Con Condren or Condon? Margaret? Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, I but can you send out an email, like a townwide email on that, asking for help? Because I'm sure there'd be people who would be willing to volunteer if they just know about it, because it's the first yeah. time hearing about it. And and I would definitely do that and then put it up on the social media sites and then to see if. Uh, Folks will come the only me. thing is I I would I'll talk to her and default to her about how much she wants to blanket it because she has to control the volunteers. So, you know, if she ends up with 100 volunteers, you know, that's great. Um, but she has to have the have the process in place to be able to manage that. Um, but it's not a bad idea. How many people down is she? Do you know, Gary? How many volunteers do they need? I don't know. I don't have that number. She's been reaching out, trying to see if the town would take it over, and we just don't have the capacity to do it. Yep. Um, especially in this budget year. Um, you know, we do support them. We we provide a lot of the um, um, mulch related to it, and we'll dot we'll we'll dump it and we'll provide it in locations. But in terms of spreading and picking the floral arrangements and uh, that level, we we allow the volunteers to do that type of work. Um, Keisha Farms uh, Committee has been doing uh, a lot of great focus on social media and outreach marketing. They're a little bit behind. Um, as I mentioned last time, we've been working with the University of Hartford. Uh, there's been some transitioning without hiring a consultant and then bringing them in as a consultant. And then they had a changeover in leadership with some restructuring that they did. But they have multiple, um, multiple colleges now involved. Um, with that, so you've got your graphic design group, you've got um, a marketing group, you've got um, engineering students, architectural students, um, business students, all kind of hands on deck putting things together. And we've started a social media subcommittee. Um, they have a series of events that are coming up that we're working on publicizing, which would be to gather and garner community input. Um, right now, we're just working out the details of how we would do that through a Zoom. Uh, so hopefully in the next maybe two weeks or so, we'll have our first community engagement session. I anticipate with Zoom, being able to have a back and forth dialogue with all the people who are calling in. And that's kind of our concern is if you have 100 people, how do you control, or even 50 people, how do you control the volume of questions that go on and on and steer it the right way versus being in an in-person meeting? Um, so we're working out logistics on that. There is a group that's considering doing a walk of the property um, as early as this Sunday at two o'clock that hasn't been approved yet and or confirmed. 
Um, I have some concerns regarding the condition of the property and whether or not I want to allow people to just walk on it. But um, so we're working out the details of that. But the idea is that's just another mechanism to engage individuals so that they can see the landscape and understand what they're what can possibly go there. Uh, do, do. Um, another plug, and I can't remember if I said this at the last meeting, I did say it at the council meeting, I uh, just kudos to the health district, social services, parks and recreation, and even our surrounding town um, uh, respond, emergency response team, they were able to coordinate, well, social services specifically coordinated, uh, reached out to 2,000 uh, residents within town, within targeted age population to encourage them and uh, in some cases bring them to a coordinated event at the community center to provide vaccine, um, mostly targeting the senior population and those at greatest risk. Um, uh, special thanks to Amy Miller from Social Services, uh, as well as obviously the Central Connecticut Health District and all this um, community uh, social use staff. Uh, for everything that they did. They gave out more than 400, they provided more than 400 shots uh, to residents. Oh. And that is now officially closed. Uh, it was just for a targeted population. And I think they did a great job. Budget process, as many of you saw, uh, the budget request is a 3.12% increase over last year. That includes the Board of Ed's 2.7% increase, the town side 3.5%. Uh, that is based off of kind of a view of getting uh, getting the town back up and running based off of where they were two years ago versus last year. Um, it brings a number of things that we took offline back online. Uh, we did our best to reduce costs and find opportunities to move things around, touching reserve funds where we were, where we can touch reserve funds without council authorization um, and making recommendations there. The difficult part is going to be really the heavy lift on the council. Uh, there's a number of opportunities, but those are well outside of my ability as the town manager. They require um, kind of council review and approval. Um, I do not envy the position that they are in uh, because it is absolutely a very tough budget year, just so people are aware. Um, last year, because you're able to go, um, we were able to kind of constrict where it was because we weren't sure what or where our budget line item was, budget line was, because we weren't sure what to expect. Um, whenever you do that within a year, the following year hurts a lot more because you have to you have to absorb those costs somewhere. Um, and so I look forward to working with them, my buzz, uh, to to try to creatively resolve some of these issues and solve some of these problems. Um, August nineteenth. August 19th, oh my God, I've just pushed through the summer. April 19th is uh, the public hearing on the budget where I'll present the budget in whole. Uh, so you can see uh, kind of uh, over several slides, the main drivers of the budget increases, which include some contractual requirements, but also things that are outside of our control, uh, trash or you know, just trash disposal in general. Um, our actuaries got to love them, even though the market rate is going pretty strong, they want to reduce our, um, our assumptions, which drives costs up. So there's a tremendous leap in things like uh, retiree pension and OPEB costs, other post-employment benefits, just so that you're aware. Um, the, I can't say the majority, but anyone hired post-2012 is no longer on the pension program. So Previous town manager, previous councils have done well in making that determination to move from that program. There's a negative side in terms of the staffing, but there's a positive side potentially in the line items. Uh, so we wrestle with that every day and with every contract. Uh, we wanna do what's right for the retirees um, and the existing staff and also look to stabilize um, staff moving forward while keeping in mind the needs of the community. So it's a very, it's a very challenging balance, unfortunately, but those cost drivers, uh, jump us up and uh, the general operation costs things like minimum wage going up basically two times in a year. Um, you know, uh, those costs all have to get baked into what we pay people. So um, police accountability bill increased police department line items considerably. It requires us to send individuals to get um, mental health uh, 
evaluations more frequently uh, on an annual basis. Cost of ammunition has gone up. So there's all these baked in costs that we can't control that were mandated, those wonderful unfunded mandates that really start pushing things uh, upward. So we, you know, like I said, I did my best to balance it within the, con the confines of what I'm allowed to do prior to council approval. And uh, now I'll work with council to try to do my best to mediate uh, and mitigate uh, more of those increases. Anything else on budget, hold on. Oh, calendar schedule. So uh, April 19th, I'm doing my presentation to council and then tentative dates are uh, 21st, 26th and 28th of April. Um, and then heading into May, for council deliberations. And um, there's some guidance that recently came out from the state in terms of the budget timeline, which may amend some of this a little bit. But I'll wait to get council direction on that. And then physical services, April 17th is doing for those people who bring their yard, who like to uh, do a lot of yard work. I don't know if anyone really likes to do it. I think my father-in-law enjoys it way too much. Um, but uh, April 17th, there's an opportunity to bring, I think it's a half a cubic yard to the transfer station at no cost. Yeah, half a cubic yard of brush and branches free of charge uh, on April 17th between 8 and 8. I think, just make sure I haven't missed anything tremendous. Um, Social Justice Coalition next meeting is April 20th at 5.30. If anyone is interested in attending, we've now moved forward into uh, subcommittees and we're starting to work through uh, some great dialogue. And I'll mention this just so Judy can be mad at me later, which is um, Brainerd Airport, uh, still kind of waiting and holding on to that. There's been some discussion about whether or not they're gonna um, decommission the airport. The town at this point has not been a part of that conversation. We did hear some resident input, but um, at this point, no one's reached out to me from the city of Hartford um, or from the state regarding that. We are waiting on, um, a lot of this is stemming from the conversation about their need to clear cut and top some of the trees over at, um, in, on town property and through a conservation easement um, over in the North Meadows. So we're kind of in a holding pattern there. And I, I you know, I, I'll default to end, anyone else who wants to discuss that um, later. That's, that's it for me. Um, thank you, Mr. Manager. I had one question. It's, uh, it wasn't brought up, but you talked about with potential opportunity at the Masonic and the brewery and whatnot. It made me think about parking. Have, did we get any additional info on First Church on maybe using their parking lot at all for overflow? Yeah, there's a couple things going on with parking in Old Weathersfield. Um, we have a verbal commitment from them that we can use it. Um, getting something, we've gone, uh, First Church and I have gone back and forth with language in an MOU um, and no one seems to be against any of the language in it. It's just getting the signature seems to be our delay. Um, and some of that is frankly COVID driven um, in the last few months and just them returning to their normal um, operation. So I'm, I'm hoping to have that done maybe by our next meeting where I have it signed, but there seems to just be this verbal understanding and agreement that they want to support the town as best they can. Um, and I just really want that um, kind of solidified really for protection of both the town and uh, First Church. I don't want any bad blood uh, coming of it saying, well, you said you'd do this or, you know, it's really starting to in impact our uh, um, our services or masses that take place here. So I, I wanna make sure that's really mutually understood. And then the other side of it is um, uh, on the other side of that, I'm working with the engineer and um, engineering department and fire department to make some adjustments to the parking lot and the fire station uh, side of things. Which hopefully right. we've, we've gotten tightened up. I probably have about five drafts Gary on the on Gary on the first church parking agreement, we yep. probably need to button that up sooner than later at the at the PNZ meeting the other night for the 
uh, brewery regulations, even though it was not about the 245 Main Street, uh, some of the neighbors uh, spoke up about that and are starting to. So if uh, he comes in with his actual application and we have a hearing um, and we don't have that uh, in some documented way, that could be uh, a stumbling block for that for that project and for um, when um, Comstock Ferry wants to, you know, add their add their additional activities. So um, whatever we can do to at least get a uh, some sort of documented understanding, um, we, we really probably need to effort that. I think I'm an email right now. Great. Gary, and Gary, if you need any help, I live very close to First Church. I'll be happy to hang out there, you know, with a sign saying "Sign this agreement." Um, <laughs> you let me know. Um, great. Does that conclude your report, Mr. Manager? Thank you, sir. Can I, can I ask one question about, uh, is there anything going on with the steep funds and uh, talk about repurposing those maybe potentially with some of these projects that we just brought up earlier? So we, we have um, been continuing to uh, dangle those funds for the um, Church Street property. And we've asked him to come back to us with a, an overall plan and a strategy as to how he might spend those funds and what the return uh, on the investment might be to the community. So we have not seen that. He's had some difficulties lining up uh, folks who could help him prepare the, that kind of documentation. So uh, we have been uh, encouraging that and actually calling you know, consultants and calling him to try to move that along, but to no, no progress yet. But um, so that was the most logical. And as I said at the beginning, there may be some new interest in that property from a private, a separate private interest. So certainly if we can help uh, with that and if that project makes sense, then uh, then that might be a even faster track to, to get that money utilized. So we would, have to get, we would have to get the plan and then go to the state and get their blessing to reprogram it. So there would be a process to do that. Um, just to, uh, to put a cap on that, on, on the parking, I meant to me mention earlier between La Noche, I spoke with them today, they're planning on going to dinner hours sometime in late spring. Um, you know, one of the more popular places on Main Street is the Main Street Creamery, uh, with what um, our friends at Comstock are doing and the potential brewery. We're blessed to have that parking lot right across the street from that area. So um, uh, I'm glad to see that they were, they're feeling good about that. Mr. Manager. Um, town can Council I, liaison, Mr. Penelope. Oh, can please, I just I'm sorry. I didn't see a question, process. I'm sorry. Um, one of the things that I think is gonna be very important, if, if First Church does agree to um, allow parking there, is to get a sign that says free parking, because otherwise people won't use it, um, thinking that they're on private property to park. And I think it's gonna come to a head when um, and I'll talk about it later, but the bikes on Main, that's coming. And that's going to bring the same number of people that came in for scarecrows. And we need to park them. So we need a sign there is what I'm saying to say uh, free parking. The sooner and the down, better. And free. on the other end too. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I, I thank Bryce at the Charles, he actually paid for signs that tell people they can park at Keeney and in the fire station lot. Uh, we're looking at our, you know, probably should be looking into it. And I think Peter has, but I could be wrong. Cindy, you had a question? Yes, I do. Um, just for the um, for the budget, when you announce uh, a public hearing, will you then, when you send out emails to the town or you have a kind of an email blast, will you include a Zoom uh, connection? How do people comment on the budget? Yep. Yeah. Just like our standard council meeting, there's a um, there's a, it'll come out as a as a notice with a Zoom and uh, for a call in. I might do it a little differently than last year. I have to look into it. it um, I'm not sure I can solve some of the challenges from last year, but um, it was so new. So, um, but yes, people will be able to call and uh, they receive 10 minutes instead of the standard five this week. Okay. So when I saw the budget being announced, there was a calendar and a mention of the uh, public hearings that we had, but I didn't see a Zoom um, attachment or link. Yeah. Yeah. When we, so, when, 
when we put out the council meeting, the public hearing, we'll, we'll update it then. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions on this topic? Just a quick question. On the subject of MOUs and free parking over at First Church, I'm not familiar with the uh, classification of the parking lot at the Historical Society, if there's currently an agreement between the town and them, since I know that some people have, you know, tend, to, tend to park there. Um, but just thinking about the needs for additional parking as we approach sort of the summer season, um, I think that it'd be great if we could, as, as Ms. Keene had brought up, try to uh, encourage parking in those overflow lots um, with perhaps some signage. Uh, so either that would, you know, the prerequisite to that would be a formalized agreement, or if, you know, that already is a town lot, that would be great. Um, just because there is a lot of traffic that has a tendency to, uh, you know, people naturally tend to park uh, on both sides of, the, of Main Street uh, in and around uh, the fire station lot um, because of all the businesses that are uh, uh, concentrated right there, um, which sort of makes it difficult for people who are driving and uh, people who are biking to access, uh, you know, to, to, to be able to move through that roadway. Um, so if we could try to embrace that second lot as a part of our efforts to uh, improve parking access uh, in Old Weathersfield, I think that would be great. Thank you. Any other comment? Okay, great. Councilor Penelo? Yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll kind of just give a brief update. Um, like, you know, I, I, obviously the message isn't lost on me. It's definitely budget season. Uh, Gary actually dropped his, uh, my copy off to me earlier this week. I'm about halfway through, so I'll sort of uh, uh, reserve my comments one way or the other until I've actually gone through it completely. Um, I'll highlight just a few things that came out of last meeting and Mayor, if you want to add anything, uh, feel free. Uh, so uh, we last meeting, we voted to approve the uh, crack seal paving and milling contracts just in time to begin the spring paving program. Uh, Gary, I believe you have the uh, tentative schedule for that as far as where they're uh, starting. I want to say it's Jordan Lane area, right? Um, kind of a mix. I'm going to bring it up. This is not going to, oh, I'm disabled for screen sharing. I'll, um, let me yeah, open. It's, let me it's share off of Jordan. It's the uh, west side of Jordan, just before you get up to uh, Ridge Road. Got it. To, to the south of that. Uh, moving on, uh, we, we also voted to accept a grant for signage as part of Heritage Way. So this would sort of further direct patrons in Old Weathersfield to different locations, as well as further connect Old Weathersfield to the meadows. And honestly, as the weather starts getting better, especially on a day like today, I don't think that could have come at a better time. Uh, and then the last note I have is that uh, we, we voted to sell a landlocked parcel down in the meadows to the Weathersfield Game Club. So uh, that's the ones that I really had to highlight. Mr. Mayor, do you have anything else to add? Not really, no. Between you and uh, what the town manager has said covers pretty much where we've been in the last couple of weeks and where we plan to go in the next month. So great job. Sorry, Mayor. Concludes my report. Thank you, Councilor Penelo. Um, Commissioner Oikel? Yes. You had some questions, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, several things happening on Tuesday night. Of course, you've heard the breweries are approved in town in our regulation. Uh, Mr. Knightitz, who has a site, of course, with, besides the Weathersfield Shopping Center at the corner of Wells and Silas Dean. Um, again, he, he owns the Rite Aid parcel. And I think he wants to split that off because he came in for a subdivision that runs right down the middle of it and uh, actually appeared at the, you know, on Zoom at the commission meeting. And uh, I thank him for all the thing, all he's done for Weathersfield in the last 40 or 50 years. And uh, anyway, we approved that. And uh, I think he intends to sell or want to sell the, uh, the uh, Rite Aid site. And that's the reason for the subdivision split down the middle. Um, the again, uh, we approved. Let's see. 
next we put off till the next our next meeting the uh, discussion on fence issues uh was supposed to be brought up and uh and we started almost on it but then we continued it to the next meeting we didn't really discuss anything on it and uh it's it's a rather involved topic uh, every time you mention fence issues whether they're minor or not about corners and uh uh, corner issues and side issues on the corner and, and heights and so forth. It gets more involved. And uh, in fact, we had a petition almost uh, already from uh, the people over in Oxyoke who got concerned about something uh, several years ago that went on over there. And so they're, they're well aware of fence issues. Uh, that's just an example. So at the next meeting, we'll be taking up that. Uh, Peter will be submitting more information to us and more material, I think, to consider. Uh, the other thing we approved was uh, a drive-in down on into the meadows, down at the, uh, the, the uh, commercial building site down there. It will be a year round drive-in proposal. Uh, some we did, we approved, the commission approved a proposal last year. This one is more elaborate with the more, more up-to-date and real uh, more, more appropriate bathroom facilities, for example. And, uh, and they're gonna make sure that there are enough people around to direct traffic and make sure that people can get to the restaurant at the, on the riverside of the parcel. So uh, I think it was a good approval and uh, glad the commission uh, went, went ahead with that one. That's about it, Mr. Chairman, from, from me. Any questions, I'll be glad to take or Peter can take them, either one. Any questions for Commissioner Oikel from p &Z? Mr. Oikel, thank you for your report, sir. Um, Ms. Well Glad to do it. Ms. Keene, tourism. Okay, tourism. Um, we had a, a meeting on March 30th and uh, it was kind of interesting. We had two speakers. And one, there's a new theater company in town. It's a Shakespearean theater company, and they're looking for space to have their pr presentations or their plays. And, uh, you know, I was thinking the Masonic would be the perfect spot for small um, theater productions, but uh, I don't know what's going on there, but that might be a suggestion for, uh, for use of that building if somebody's going to be renovating it. The other was from a Sufa sign company, and these are electronic signs that sit on the sidewalk, and the town can update the signs uh, as, as needed. So there's uh, new listings of what's going on in town and things like that. They looked very interesting. They're very modern looking, so I'm not sure that they would fit into Old Weathersfield, but certainly worth a look. Um, the other thing, uh, it, we're moving ahead with a promo video um, to promote Weathersfield. The old one is pretty dated, um, and there's so many new things going on in Old Weathersfield that um, the tourism would like to revive, uh, get a new video up. Um, the next thing is the Bicycles on Main. This is going to be a huge event, and bikes are already up all over town to promote it, um, decorated bikes. So um, I think that there will be a lot of bike traffic in whole Weathersfield at that time. Um, everybody's showing off their bikes, and uh, but parking is going to be an issue. There are going to be a lot of people that are going to want to park for the day. So hopefully First Church and Bikini will be empty. Um, the Heritage Way, we already talked about that from the town council perspective. And then the Old Shopkeepers uh, Association, which is the model, I think, for the um, Celestine Highway um, shopkeepers or business uh, businesses to get together to um, promote the Celestine Highway. But the Old Weatherfield shopkeepers are looking to hire a marketing company to market uh, their, their businesses, their stores in uh, Old Weathersfield and Old Weathersfield in general. And that's all I have right now. But the month of May is all gonna be bikes. So get your bikes flowered up and get down there. So we got our own version of bike week and it's not motorcycles. So that's, that's good. Right. 
And we're not Sturgis, so we're good. <laughs> yes. Great. Ms. Raymond, Chamber? Yeah, thank you. I have a couple of things I want to mention. Um, our scholarship deadline is not until April 15th. So if you know of any seniors out there who have not applied, um, I've been trying to push that. So we have several applications pending, but like to get some more. Um, we are want to get our business after hours going again, now that we have some outside availability. Um, so look forward to that. And if you know of any businesses that would like to do that, have them reach out to me. Um, also ribbon cuttings. I had um, a new business in town reach out to me and I sent something to Denise trying to set up a ribbon cutting. We can still do those now. We can do those again, I'm, I'm assuming. So some activity there. We're going to uh, do our car show, uh, which is great, getting some more activity out there. That is in the works. Also, um, it was brought to me through Peter, Betty Standish, and a new chamber member that they want to do an EV car show. So we are thinking about doing something like that, and I'm working with a couple of people. Um, the initial thought was to mix that with the antique car show that we have, but people who, uh, both sides didn't like that idea. They, they want it separate. So we're working on that. Um, so that, that should be pretty interesting. Um, one thing I, I wanted to ask EDIC, we, uh, the chamber is holding their annual dinner in uh, June, which we normally have it a lot earlier, we're going to have it, we're hoping to have it at the Charles and we had asked if the EDIC wanted to go, wanted to um, do a joint venture on that because there was no business of the, you know, the business uh, salute to business dinner was not, we weren't able to have that. So I don't know if there was any decisions on that or any thought put to that. Deb, were they going to plan on doing this outside or? Um, yeah. Okay. So um, a couple of things. What, if, we, if the chamber just does it, we'll have, we're going to have it at the um, Charles, have it outside. Um, if we, of course, we're going to charge for that. And, you know, the cost will be um, developed that way. But um, he can hold having two tents up to 100 people, he said. So I think we could combine the dinners. What we wanted to also get back to is having the chamber honor a volunteer of the year, an employee of the year, you know, through the town. We certainly want to recognize the uh, fire and police department this year. I think that they've, you know, done an extraordinary job. So we, we wanted to honor them as well. So we thought maybe honoring the salute to business people might be a good combination. Um, it, it's a novel idea. I don't, I need to get more information. Why don't you and I and Pete, um, let's plan a powwow and just kind of talk it through. Um, sure. and then we'll share it with the rest of the group, but let's talk about logistics, et cetera, if that's good with you. Is that all right with you, Pete? Of course. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll, send Deb, I'll let you be the one to, uh, to send out a, a request for a meeting. I'll put that in your lap. Great. 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 And yep. just in just in FYI, the country club, we're going to be having the uh, golf tournament this year on May 17th, but they are doing it so that there's some people in the dining room and then they have a huge tent outside. So the remainder of the people will be outside. So th yeah, that's where we've always done the salute to business before. So maybe that's an option too. Well, we did talk to uh, the country club about that. And like you just said, Judy, there was two separate, some would be inside, some would be outside. And it, that's probably great for a golf tournament. We, but we were okay. concerned yeah. about separating yeah. people for that, but yeah. we can certainly discuss that at, at our meeting that I organized. Great. Does that conclude your report, Deb? It does. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any questions for Deb? Okay, great. Um, Mr. Mayor, would you like a few words? Um, oh, he's, he went black. I didn't, uh, uh, he's not here, so I may miss him. I'll call him back if, oh, there you are. Um, no, I'm back. I'm microwaving my lunch. Um, <laughs> no, I just wanted to, uh, you know, everything everybody's saying is, is great. You know, I, I do 
want to put a little bit of caution out there. Gary did say there is a concern as COVID numbers are are not spiking, but they're or peaking, but they are on the rise. So, you know, Deb's your idea of you know dinners out. That's all great. We just got to make sure that we do it in a safe uh, fashion as much as possible. Uh, Judy, I was at the uh, Old Weathersfield Shopkeepers uh, meeting this morning. Uh, Dr. Joe had a group of folks, Larissa Lake, uh, Bryce, as well as um, the um, uh, Webb Dean Stevens, uh, Amy Wittroff from the Keeney Center, so are the Historical Society. Uh, they are planning that event for May 1st to May 31st. Uh, it's going to be great. It's kind of a scarecrows on main springtime with the bikes. Um, but yeah, parking is going to definitely be a, uh, a challenge. Bryce has taken it upon himself, as Gary had mentioned, to put signs out to direct people to the uh, public lot behind the Keeney Center. And, um, you know, hopefully we can start working on the parking issues that has dogged Old Weathersfield since before I was even on the council. Um, and unfortunately, what it's doing is, is uh, um, creating a, you know, a, a, almost a a stop for for businesses to want to relocate or locate in old weathersfield so you know i know there's ongoing discussions between peter gary as well as um, um, engineering to try and free up some spots so hopefully we can do that and then continue to to get people in the last thing you want to do is create a headache or a nightmare for them when they get here so we are working on that but uh, no everything sounds great you know positive you know moving forward Hopefully with, uh, you know, vaccinations going up, people will want to decide like on a day like today uh, to go out and enjoy, um, you know, all that Weathersfield has to offer. So appreciate everybody's hard work. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the only thing I wanted to just, uh, just remind Pete is that if we could get something together with Joe Sulo, um, we did talk about that. I think that's important. Um, subcommittee reports, um, from marketing or financial strategies, Pete, I know uh, the tax incentive will really kind of fall underneath financial strategies whenever we reconvene there. Anything on the marketing side we need to get to? Uh, we, we had the social media meeting a little while ago, and I, I think we've um, followed up pretty steadily on that and seen some of our social media numbers uh, uptick uh, as a result of that. So we're seeing good uh, progress on that. Um, we probably will have a facade application or two coming shortly. So uh, I'll keep you posted on, on those uh, as they get closer and closer so that we can schedule uh, a, a finance um, meeting to discuss those. Have you gotten numbers from finance department yet on what we actually have left? No. So what's this? I mean, I know we've been looking for that for like six months. So no, no comment from me on that. Okay. Uh, not, on my, not on my lap. Anybody on this call that has any uh, particular uh, persuasion uh, capabilities, we'd like to know what we've got. Um, <laughs> Mr. Evans? I have persuasion capabilities. Um, it's, yes, uh, it, there, there's a range, there's a question of some stuff that's open and outstanding and that's where the question comes in. Uh, some of that is actually, um, is more detailed than needed or, or more detailed than you would imagine in terms of coming up with a consensus, but there, there's some money in there. Frankly, I, I don't, I didn't want to take the fifty thousand out um, until I knew that number either. But um, my hope is that with some of the money coming down the line from the federal government, that type of stuff might qualify under infrastructure. So, kind of in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm considering that flexibility. Um, in there and hedging the bet that there's more money in there than, um, than we think. So um, now that we've been able to put the budget book out, my hope is uh, there's still short staff up there, but um, my hope is that we can give Mr. Gillespie a better number. Great. Thank you, sir. I know on um, the um, infrastructure, they're casting a wide net on what a definition of infrastructure is as of late. I would think our, our facade improvement concept would certainly be a better definition than I've seen of others. Um, so good, um, I, let's hope so. Uh, so Pete, we really have nothing on the marketing and financial side. If you guys have a copy of the minutes, if you could take a moment and review the minutes. Mark, can I just interject one thing on Please, Judy, marketing, I'm sorry. in marketing? 
um, having um, be, being on my bike around all Weathersfield and other parts of Weathersfield, I can tell you we have a problem and that is trash on the streets. And I think that we need to elicit either a volunteer day where everybody goes and picks up. It's nips, masks, and plastic bags. And they're everywhere. And it that presents very badly for Weathersfield um, when people do come to visit. So I think we need to quickly get out there and pick some of it up. So I don't know how you do that. Peter, maybe you have a suggestion or Mayor Mike uh, might have a, a suggestion on how to get people or the town staff, I don't know, but it needs to get all picked up. Yeah. Could that fit into the beautification category that we're canvassing for um, um, uh, volunteers for? That's beautification. Well, I'm thinking we... maybe kids, you know, yeah. get the high school, the junior high school, elementary schools, get them all to take a block and get it done. Yeah, like they do for the Cove, does the Cove cleanup day, if we yeah. could just do something uh, without a lot of fanfare and see if we can social media, get people out as long as we target the areas we need, uh, coordinate with physical services to pick up uh, whatever we collect. Um, that could probably be done um, virally if um, somebody wanted to initiate that. Well, maybe from Great a marketing idea, perspective, Judy. we can put that on our social media uh, experts. If that's something now that we're building that, um, that would be a good idea. You know, there's been a lot of windstorms this winter. And so a lot of this stuff has just blown into the, the weeds along the side of the road. So it may take physical services to get a lot of that stuff out. So Judy, I've got a quote here, nips, masks, and plastic bags. The Judy Keene story. Um, yep. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, have you guys have, have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, before uh, um, I was reading it kind of closely because I wanted to I wanted to see what the vote was, the final vote tally was for that Lenoche uh, facade improvement, and um, I think there may be either one or two members who were not been recorded because I think Tom Petalo was at that meeting and I don't think I see him as attending, and I know he spoke. Um, Against he was that, against, I as I re he was against, as I recall. Yeah, and it's not recorded, so just that. And I know I, Paul Thompson may have been at that meeting, but I don't know if he dumped before that vote occurred. But I just wanted to raise the, that 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 issue that some people might not have been recorded. Um, I think we had um, it was three to five, as I recall, or three to six. Peter, I think there was three. What do we have? Rec Record on the we minutes. Could, we couldn't tell from the. That's why I was uh, asking you at the beginning of the meeting to make sure we have a good record of who's at the meeting. Because when um, your images aren't there, sometimes you can't tell right. uh, who, who voted, and there's an, only one individual on the screen. So uh, what I'll do is send an email out to everybody and let them, you know, tell me what their vote was if they were if they actually voted, and we'll we'll correct the minutes. So if somebody wants to make a motion to approve the minutes uh, and have me uh, correct it according to the official record, um, I, I can certainly do that. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Thank you, Judy. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any discussion? I don't think so. Um, all right, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Carson. Your attention to detail always marvels me. Um, the, um, our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, May 13th. Um, stay COVID happy. Um, it's good to see you all. And um, um, I look forward to our next meeting and I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy. Um, if you are in favor, turn off your computer.